Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. I'm recording at a different time of the day now. It's kind of like really weird now. But yeah, welcome to our roguelike tutorial. And today we are going to be actually start making UI, uh, I mean AI. So this is a bit weird. It's very like I was a bit stumped in the last episodes because the way I coded this previously, as I said, I started with different things. So the AI and gameplay and kind of that, that kind of stuff, interaction with uh, with items, that was something that I did at the very end. So it feels odd being in episode 12 or <laughs> and already doing all this stuff. That seems like uh, I'm, I'm taking crazy pills. Okay, so we see we can like interact with with those with those characters with, with those bad guys now, but um, we want now to them to attack us to do stuff with us, uh, to actually we you know program an AI. And the problem that you well, first of all, let us start something else first. Something I don't like about because we're going to do a lot of testing with with monsters. And something you might wondering yourself is, so okay, assuming, assuming. I am not making procedural genetic stuff. I, assuming I just want to like end the tutorial now, I got your fan, and then run away and create my stuff using the map editor. I always want to um, keep those those kind of parts of our audience in mind who who are kind of like fun, uh, who are um, you know who, who just want to make an RPG and want to be like running around with a guy and and want to create like a nice uh, little world that you know that you can that you can run around with. So if you're using this map editor, how do you make the monster spawn? Well, you want to spawn them, right? It's kind of like, ugh, hmm, how do we do that? Because right now, where we're spawning the monsters, um, it's, we have to do the per code using code. And first of all, that's a lot of code. As, as you know, as you get more monsters, it's going to get a lot of code. But also, it's kind of like you, you always have to like look in the map what co the coordinates are, and then you go back and then type in the coordinates. That doesn't seem very efficient that you kind of want to be like in the map when you do when you're designing stuff you want to like be able to specify here in the map where the monsters spawn um so yeah let's do that real quick so that's going to be like we're going to just basically create oh wait i'm, I'm wrong here uh, we're going to create a new tile and it's going to be kind of like a monster spawn tile we're going to just make it like a like a red a white dot and so this is, we're going to say or actually we don't even need that we don't even need that extra new tile what am i even talking about we're just going to take this monster here. So let's say I want a monster here. I want a monster here. We're using the actual sprites of those monsters. We just put them on the map. What? So if you see them, you know, they're there. And so what we're doing now is at the beginning of the game where we actually, you know, when we launch everything, instead of like adding those mobs manually by kind of like picking out the coordinates, we're just going to loop through the entire map. So we're gonna go 0, 15, do for y equals 0, 15, do. And, and, and then we're gonna go something like if uh, m gets, we're getting the tile at, a, at, a, at this position. If that equals uh, our slime tile, so that's gonna be 192, then and then in this case, we're adding the mob there. And then um, and set, we are changing the tile to something else. You know, we don't want this, this weird gray mob, uh, this gray slime to hang around there. So we're gonna replace this with just a regular, regular uh, normal tile. Like so. So when you run this, you see the monsters will spawn uh, there where we set this this one tile, the, the one gray tile. So this allows us to kind of like design, you know, the where the mobs are, where the monsters are, and what kind of monsters appear where. Of course, obviously, when you have more monsters, you will have to make um, make a, a, you know make this this um, this little loop also kind of like may pay attention to the different monsters. But it's you know it's kind of like a generally that's how we're gonna do this. Okay. Now onto the AI stuff. So if you think about it, so we want the monster to move. Moving the monster is not a problem, but a question that we all have to ask ourselves is, where does the monster, like how does the monster know 
how to approach the enemy, how to approach us. Because, you know, you can imagine, like, we are standing right next to it. We can imagine programming an AI that checks, you know, if, if, the, if your character is nearby. But what if we are standing further apart? How do we decide in which direction this monster goes? What I'm getting at, we have to actually do some kind of pathfinding. And there is, like, a cheap and easy way of doing pathfinding. And there is the proper way to do pathfinding. Eventually, very quickly actually, we're gonna arrive at the proper way. But first I wanna show you the cheap and easy way because some of the functions that we need for a cheap and easy way, we're gonna need later on anyway. And so, um, so the easy way to do this, the cheap and easy way is to kind of like look at the neighboring tiles and look at the possible tiles that we can walk to, like up, down, left, right. And then measure the distance between this tile that we would walk to and our target. And then we're gonna always pick the tile that lowers our distance to our target. We kind of like are like a homing missile, basically. We're going, uh, we're always um, trying to reduce our distance to to our opponent. So let's try to implement that. And then we're gonna like talk a li little bit about what the downfalls are of this kind of system and how to do it correctly. So first we need to kind of like put a distance function in our program, a function that calculates the distance between two points. That's a very fundamental basic thing that comes up over and over again, not just uh, in such a situation where it's like, oh, AI and stuff like that, and stuff like that. <laughs> but also uh, where, for example, sometimes you would do collision detection with that. You, let's say you have a sphere or two spheres that are colliding with each other, then you kind of like measure the distance between their centers. And when the distance gets close enough, that means they have to be coll collided. That's a very, very cheap and easy way of doing uh, collision detection. Now, um, this is one of the one of the functions that I'm just going to copy out because this is something I never remember myself. I cannot. I actually, I would be struggling coding it from scratch just because my brain is a, a Swiss cheese. It's very delicious and it stinks a little bit. Um, <laughs> I was talking about the holes. Um, so here in the tools uh, tab, we are going to create a new function. I'm just going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to explain, of course, what it means. So this is a dist function. This is the dist function. Uh, come on, close this. Okay, so this <coughs> calculates the distance between f, fx, f, fy, and tx and ty. So like two points from two, f from t2. Um, so what it does is kind of like it um, calculates the difference between those two positions. And then it gives us the, the root of the sum of the squares of those. Why? Well, because it's the uh, Pythagoras theorem. <laughs> and you might remember this from school. <laughs> let, me, let me show you real quick. Bam. Can we pull this up? Yes. Okay. Pythagoras theorem. Can I zoom in? I, I apparently I cannot zoom in. It's I this this thing doesn't have the functionality to zoom in. But imagine you being as staying staying at this corner, and you want to be going here, right? So you want to go in, along this C line. In order, you have to kind of figure out how long C is. That's that's the distance. That would be the distance if we were on those standing on those corners. So we have to figure out C. But we know that C square is A square plus B square. So your kind of like your x distance uh, squared plus your y distance squared, that's going to be your diagonal distance squared. Um, so that's why, and not squared, um, to the power of 2. So that's why you kind of like, um, or is, it's, it is squared, power of 2 is squared, right? I'm, I'm always getting confused about the American terms for math because I learned math in Polish and in German, but never in English. So we have to apologize that I'm not getting my things correctly. Also, thank you so much for, for uh, pointing out, um, somebody pointed out that I was talking about the rest of the division. It's supposed to be apparently a remainder of the division. All right, I'm learning so much. Okay, so what we have to do is we're going to take our, our y distance, we're going to square it, to, we're going to put it to the power of 2. We're going to add the y distance, we're going to put it to the power of 2, and we're going to pull the root. Is that <laughs> you're going to pull the pull the square root uh, from that, and that's going to be uh, the c distance. That's that's the that's the gist of this little this little equation. Oops, 
No. Okay. So I'm not sure if there is a more compact way of writing this, but I think it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, there is no way of of putting something to square and pq8. I think so. So like using something times something is I think the simplest way of doing this. I'm not sure if there is. Let me know, guys, if you have like a more compact thing because I'm using this over and over again. So if I can like pull off some some uh, tokens from this, that would be great. All right, so this is already kind of like our our engine behind the AI of our of our um, of our monsters. Okay, so let's try to do let's try to write some kind of like AI function. I'm gonna here in this in this in this tab. I'm gonna go with something like do AI. Do AI. That seems like a good thing. And then in the do AI function, we're just gonna loop through all of our our monsters. So we're gonna go like um, 4 m or mobs 4 m in all mob do, and then we want to first make sure that this is not that um, that we're not actually moving our player character. So we're gonna go if m is not equal p mob, then and here is now where we're gonna actually do our AI. Um, so in this moment, um, it might be worthwhile to kind of like, um, so now we want to like, we know where the mob is and we know that it's, uh, we have to figure out in which direction it has to move. Um, so it kind of has to check all of the neighboring squares and uh, calculate the distance between the neighboring squares and the position of the, our, our character and figure out which of the neighboring squares would be the closest to our to our uh, our character, and also it has to like take take into account which of the squares it actually even can walk on. Um, so yeah, let's try that. <clears throat> so um, we're gonna use a, a cool trick. We're gonna use um, remember this. I told you that we're gonna use this quite a lot. So we can use actually these two um, to loop through all of the neighboring squares. So we're gonna go for i equals zero to three do and and then we're gonna do something like local dx dy equals uh, dir x i and dir x dir y i. So kind of like we have the difference here, and so then uh, we calculate the distance. So we're gonna go local dist equals um, maybe let's not let's not call it dist because the function is already called dist right this is already dist so let's call it dst <laughs> uh, in equals dist and then it's going to be between mx that's the position of our our um, our mob my that's also position of our mob and then target is that's going to be pmob dot x pmob.y That's my thinking. Now, here, I figured we have to actually um, we have to actually calculate something like a best um, best dist best b best dist, yeah, best dist and then maybe something like best x and best y or bx by let's go with b that's going to be sh shorter b dist so these are going to be like like, like our best possible values and um, so we kind of have to think about this a little bit we should give them some starter values um, so let's go like nine 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 hundred ninety nine nine and it's going to be zero zero something like this so we calculated now the distance. Now it's up to us to figure out um, if the distance is that we calculated of a tile that we're looking at, if that's actually better than the best distance that we already found. So we're gonna go with something like if and dist is smaller than best dist, um, then then this is actually okay. We found uh, actually a good candidate to for us to walk towards. So we're gonna go b dist equals dist. And then bx. I made a mistake. I'm, I'm going to fix this right away. Uh, equals dx and dy. 
and by equals dy. So we're saving uh, how much, like we're saving the position or the, the movement, how in which direction we moved into into our little um, into into the, those variables that we prepared here that save kind of like our best result. Uh, something I'm um, a mistake I made here is I'm checking the distance between the mob and our player character, but we don't actually want to be looking at the position where our mob currently is. Instead, what we want to be doing, we want to look at you know the different neighboring tiles. So that's why we actually calculate dx and dy. That's why we're doing this loop. So we need to add dx and dy to the position of the mob. So we're looking actually, you know, all of the neighboring tiles. Okay. And so once we are through this loop, we're gonna, we're gonna sh we should be having bx and by should be kind of like our target position. Ah, there is one problem that we're not looking at yet right now. And that is we're not actually taking into account if, um, if, there is a um, if the, the tile is walkable or not. That's something that we're not doing yet. But you know what? I'm getting nervous. I'm, I wrote a lot of code right now, and just want to see if this works. We haven't actually never we have never moved with our characters before. So yeah, let's let's try to make this work. Mm, so in our gameplay, no, in an update, update game. Yeah. So here where we do butts, we move the player, and after we move the player, we're gonna do the, uh, the AI stuff. No, actually no, not after we do the AI. We're gonna have to hear where we return. So if the P equals I uh, equals one, we, the animation of our movement has played, so now it's time for us to do the AI stuff. And here the AI will be like, okay, so now we we picked the the right the destination thing, and so the way we do this in gameplay in our update function is where we, when we press a button we say move player, and in move player we do like the move bump, right? Hit map and so forth. Let me look at how mob walk looks. What is mob walk? That's something that I think we just just there we go mob walk. Perfect, that's exactly what we need. So we look for the best solution and we go mob walk, mob, uh, that's gonna be m, dx, dy, no, bx, by. So now all that's left to do is we have to actually create a um, situation where, um, like here an update function where we have our update p turn so now there's going to be like an update ai turn and there's a good chance that we actually can merge them maybe together into something into the same function let's see uh, update ai turn and we're gonna go upd equals update ai turn now this might be executed multiple times for for all of our mobs uh, but you know that's fine <clears throat> so for the ai turn so it's interesting, we can actually, I think we we can actually use the same PT here. There is no reason for us not, not to use PT, right? Because we're never actually using the PT and um, some kind of added timer from the AI at the same time. So we can, that kind of maybe saves us some uh, some some tokens down the line. I'm gonna actually try to reuse the PT and see if there's any, any issues with that. So the PT is fine. Then uh, here, um, not, we're not just moving one mob, but all of the mobs. So for, um, so for the AI, we actually, again, we have to loop through all of the mobs. And we wanna make sure that uh, we're just moving the not player mobs. Like so. And then we're, when we're done, we're back to update game. And uh, we no longer do the AI, we're just back to update game. Here, technically, this can disappear, technically. But I think there might be situations where we do AI and there is no active AI player. So, you know, you would be back to controlling the character. So it's, it's good that we set the update function to the update game and let the AI take over if it's necessary or not.
All right, I think I got most of it covered. Okay, I expected that. There's, it never works immediately. What happened here? Um, yeah, okay, sure, that's, that's fine. Square brackets, it's good. That's a trivial issue. Um, dx is a nil value. Right, because we go from 0 to 3, but we have to go to from 1 to 3, 4, because it's an array. What else? Attempt to call a field moth a nil value. Okay, this is more serious. For some reason, our character has not received a moth. The mob has not... I, I guess the mob walk didn't work. Oh, they're actually not receiving this. They're actually... the mob walk... No, oh, wait, that's here, mop walk. Yeah, it should have mop, mop walk. Okay, let's just do like a then if a mop, then so we're just using the actual animations where there is an animation that was set. Okay, UPD is nil now. Somebody set UPD to nil? Uh-huh, that's good. Oh, it works. So you see our <laughs> our uh, our monster are swarming towards me. Now there's a bit of a couple of issues here. First of all, they're going through the walls and then of course they actually don't attack me, they just go through me. Um so there's no kind of collision detection whatsoever. But I'm still like miffed about the fact that there um that the mob walk didn't say anything didn't save anything in mob. Okay, so this is the moment where I, I think it, it's worthwhile to establish like a debugging system. That's something actually I had um, from the beginning in my other game, from my when I programmed this initially, um, and until now it just wasn't necessary anymore. So we're gonna uh, gonna create a debug, gonna create an array debug, and then here in the draw function I'm gonna after everything is done I'm gonna actually go through the debug array and and draw all of the entries in the debug array on the screen. So we're gonna go cursor. Cursor sets like um, text cursor somewhere, and we put it like four four, and then for um, t, t text in all debug, and then we're gonna go print the the bug um, square brackets. No, it actually prints just text. And then we're gonna pick a nice shiny color. So we're gonna pick eight, so we know exactly that this is. No, actually, we're just gonna print the text. We're gonna say set color eight. And if you um, call print without any other parameters, it will automatically print the next text in the next line. So we don't actually have to care about how many entries there are in debug. And so what I want to be doing now here is I want to actually see debug um, empty, something like this. And just to make sure at the beginning of our AI function, we're gonna clear the debug. Something like this. Oh, there's a do. So you see, it's not happening. Isn't that super odd? It's not happening anymore. We not, don't see the debug. What happens if we remove this? It's also not happening. But that maybe that's because it was overwritten. Maybe the debug is actually not working. <laughs> that could be also the case. Uh, let me add something to debug. Debug. Add debug. Hello. Oh, actually, it didn't work. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, okay, that was that was the wrong way to do this. Add debug. Hello. Uh, no, this one's empty mob. Uh, 
Okay, <laughs> the printing of the debugger is actually not working. That's the problem. Um, what's the problem? Why? Why? What's your major malfunction? We're not clearing the debug anymore. And it's after we draw everything. Let's just draw it on a screen at a specific place. Maybe that's what's the problem somehow. Nope. Uh, okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm I'm I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Okay, it's there. Good. Does it work if I do it like this? Yes, it works. Does it work if I do it like this? Yes, okay, that's fine. So why the hell aren't we printing? Okay, so apparently there's nothing in B debug, but we're adding something to debug. Th that's, that's the most embarrassing thing when your debugging function actually doesn't work. If you have to debug the debug function. <laughs> Uh, oh, I know. Okay. Okay. I got it, guys. I got it. <laughs> okay, this worked. Um, okay, but we don't see the debug now popping up. Okay, now it works for some reason. Okay, I guess there, I, uh, there was some kind of like follow-up mistake from the other bug that we fixed. Good. Okay, so this is working so far so good. Uh, now I want to um, do like a, like a, is walkable thing. And here we see kind of like a bit of an issue. And that's something why I was like, um, hmm, how do we do exactly those mobs issues here? Remember how we have like the is walkable thing and that checks for also if a tile is uh, not walkable because there is a mob on it. Well, the enemies, right? They are supposed not, they're not supposed to overlap each other. They're not supposed to be going on the, on the, on a tile that's occupied by another enemy, but they should go on the tile that's occupied by our, our main character. So this is a bit of a issue where we have to check if a tile is occupied, unless it's, um, Unless the player is on it, then then it's fine to like do like the color. The, um, then it's fine to move there because if I my my, my player is there, then you will be attacking, or maybe we have to kind of like separate attacking from moving. So um, I don't know. It's a bit of an issue here. Let's let's first of all let's make sure that that our guys are not walking on on uh, on. Uh, um, tiles that are occupied let's let's do that first and then then we're gonna think about later on so we're gonna go something like if is walkable and then we're gonna check mobs then and something like this Now, um, here's a bit of an interesting thing where um, we might actually, even though it's a bit of a wasteful, I'm gonna go like TX for target X and target Y, target Y, I'm gonna go um, MX plus DX and MY plus DY. So this way we don't have to do the calculation twice. Again, there's like this dot that we spent um, a, uh, a token on, and I think this might be, might be a bit faster or a bit more efficient. Okay. So if it's walkable, then we check the distance. Otherwise we don't even consider going there. Okay, so this should allow. So you see now they're always picking a tile. They're just like going crazy there. They're never picking a tile that is already occupied by, occupied by somebody. And if we stay there where we are, we bump a wall so we we can't like don't move. You will see that my my um, my little, little dude will actually not attack me. So 
So now all that is left to do is actually making them attack me. Um, so something we could do here is basically see that we just move towards us if if we're that the mobs are not close to us. Here's what I'm thinking. If m dot x, no, we're we gonna calculate the distance between me and uh, between my character and the mob. So we're gonna go if distance between uh, m dot x, m dot y, uh, p mob x, p mob y, if this equals one, that means we are in neighboring tile. We're not diagonally because diagonally is a bit more than one, the distance. Then attack player. Else move towards player. Like that. So here is attacking player moving to our place. So what we should see now if we do this is that, um, well, the, we won't get attacked, but our mob should like stay where they are. And they're not staying where they are because um, if they're not doing anything, if the function says like do nothing, it will actually repeat the previous animation it was doing. So we also kind of want to be um, resetting the animation every time at the beginning of, of, of the of the mob function. So it's gonna go mob.any equals like, I'm gonna set it to nil. A mob. No, yeah. And then mob.socks equals zero and mob.soy equals zero. Something like this. You know what? We don't need the soy stuff. Let's just go nil. And then we're gonna actually bring back this 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 function in the update function here where we're gonna go if m is not equals pmob and m dot morph. If m dot morph exists. Let's try that. Still doing it. Um, even though we set them off to nil. Oh, it's not mob. It's, it's end of. Yeah, now it works. So we see now the the player the the slime over there stays where they are, and now they're kind of like would be it would be good now here to make them attack me. So um, so yeah, let's do that. So dx dy equals um, p mob x minus mx. That's kind of like the direction which we have to go in order to hit my player. And then it's not going to be mob walk, it's going to be bump now. And then um, gameplay, where's gameplay? Where is, well, basically it's hit mob, right? We have to hit with one mob to add them up. So it's kind of like this, hit mob. But this time it's gonna be, the attacker is gonna be M and the defender is gonna be P mob. So you see, and they're attacking. We don't hear the sound, so let us add the sound here. SFX um, Which one was it? We said this one five, five seven It works 
our mobs are attacking us. Now you see they're kind of like getting very nervous down there. Um, uh, if if I close the door, so I open the door, they kind of like walk towards me. Oh no, I'm dead. <laughs> I died. Okay, so that's good. So this is this is uh, this is this is this is really nice. Um, before we end this episode, um, I just wanted to really point out uh, kind of like the downfalls of this kind of like um, this system of this um, um, pathfinding function. So let me let me real quick exemplify it by making the, a room here, and then we're going to make a wall here. Right? This seems to be like something that that uh, AI should be able to handle, right? But alas, they cannot go uh, um, around this wall. You see, they should be just long walk. This is like they're just on the other side of the wall. They should be like, able to get me, but they aren't. And uh, if you like think about this a little bit, uh, you you should be able to understand why. Um, when they are here now, uh, in this position, uh, you don't see my mouse sadly. When uh, maybe I will. So if they're at this position here and I'm somewhere here, this going up would make them go further away from me. This is going away from me. Going down is going towards me. So they're kind of like, they are stuck here at a, like a local minimum, as we say in the math. So they is like, this is the closest they can get if they just always go downhill, always go towards me. This is the closest they get here. And in order for them to get around this obstacle, they for a short while they would have to walk away from me, so to speak. You can imagine this like if this was like something like this, right? Where you could, they, it's easy for them to, to get into this, this little hole, but once they're here, they don't really understand that you actually have to walk away from me for a while, like distance wise, like as the crow flies. They have to go, um, they have to um, increase their distance to me to walk around and then go come back. So they're not able to, to comprehend like this very, even very simple level geometry. And this is why we're going to have to later on add a more sophisticated um, pathfinding function where they are actually tracing a route all the way to me. Um, but so far, I think we're we're good. So I already noticed that we we have to add a function that lets us die. So that's that's something that we're going to talk about next. Uh, and then we're going to have me think about about the. About the about the, the more sophisticated pathfinding function. Now I have to say this part, the AI part is a bit messy. So we may be thinking about eventually maybe um, clean this up a little bit, maybe move some of the parts from there to some other, other parts, but some of the parts are pre preliminary, preliminary anyway, for example, like this distance stuff, this will work with our more sophisticated pathfinding function. So yeah, we're gonna rethink this anyway, but you know, so far it's working. Oh yeah, and by the way, also I wanted to later on to have like a function where the mobs actually just attack me only if they actually can see me. And they also like remember, remember when uh, the position that at which they last saw me, if they lose track of me, so they kind of like try to follow me. And if they no longer see me, then they will actually uh, stop following me. Uh, so I can like outmaneuver the mobs. And so we're gonna have a lot more sophisticated AI happening here. So that's why I'm not actually, don't really care about uh, cleaning this up just yet, because this will be very different soon. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, the uh, code for this uh, episode will be downstairs in the doobly-doo. Join our Discord channel. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.